Hi, I'm Rico. And I'm Alex. And we're back with another video about Disney. I missed my ball on that one. That's okay. <laughs> about some time-saving tips at Disney. We just did. And one of those time-saving tips was to have a game plan, have a strategy for your uh, early entry and your rope drop as soon as you get to Disney World. You want to know what rides you're targeting first. So we're here to cover that. We're going to yeah. take you park by park and let you know what is perhaps the best way to start your day. Yeah, when we were prepping for our trip, we were, we were stressing about this park. We wanted to make sure we were doing early entry and rope drop strategy the right way. We wanted to make sure we were getting the most done that we could. So we have some solid strategies for every park for rope drop and early entry. But there's definitely one thing that we would make sure we do not do again. Yeah. So make sure you watch the very end to see yeah. what that is. So starting with the most straightforward park to go through, and that is Animal Kingdom. So let's go ahead and tackle the early entry strategy for that first. And that is to arrive 30 to 45 minutes before the early entry park opens. Yeah, and just a reminder, early entry is for all Disney Resort guests, and it is 30 minutes before rope drop for all other guests. So we're recommending 30 to 45 minutes before early entry. Yes. So if early entry is at 8.30, which for Animal Kingdom it's not, it's earlier, sorry. But if early entry is at 8.30, once want you there at 7.45. 7.45 or 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So uh, Animal Kingdom, you'll get there early. You'll be at the front of the pack and you'll find that most of that pack is going to Pandora and that is what we would recommend. So are you. Yeah, you you're also to. going to Pandora. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey are there. Um, those are two more headliner attractions there at Animal Kingdom and they're right next to each other. So it makes sense to do Flight of Passage first because that is a ride that can easily go upwards of two hours a two hour wait time mm -hmm. uh, throughout the day. So yep. get there early, knock that out first, then swing over to Navi River Journey. Mm -hmm. um, that will also have a pretty short wait time at the start of the day, whereas later in the day that can go up to one hour. And then uh, since you'll already have knocked Pandora out, we recommend heading from there to the safari and getting there, you know, as early as you can uh, for while the animals are still active in the morning. Yep, they're more active in the morning, so it's mm -hmm. definitely a good a good plan to go there from Pandora. Yeah. So if you don't have early entry and you're going at the standard opening time to Animal Kingdom, you might want, to, I know you might want to go to Flight of Passage just like everyone else because mm -hmm. that's a great ride, but that is going to be so backed up, it's gonna be very busy. We yeah. actually recommend making your way to the safaris first. 100%, Kilimanjaro Safari is a great place to start because the animals are more active early in the morning. Most of the early entry crowds will be over in Pandora checking out those rides. And then you can definitely do Flight of Passage later in the day, maybe towards the afternoon. Mm -hmm. There'll be a much lower wait time. For I've that also there. heard it's really beautiful if you can get to Pandora kind of at dusk as you know right before the park closes. Uh, get in line for Flight of Passage. Maybe that's the last thing you do and then you can see uh, the beautiful Pandora at night with all the bioluminescence. Yeah, and doing that later at night also leaves you time to do some of the shows that are going on throughout the day, which are also really great at Animal Kingdom. I mean, the Lion King show, and then um, what's one of the birds called? Feathered, Feathered Friends, Friends in, Flight. in Flight. That's also a really fun show. That I we, liked it a lot. Yeah, we, we enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, All right, soaring into Epcot. Soaring into Epcot. So... First things first with Epcot is that you'll want to hop on the Disney My Experience app at 7 a.m. and get on the virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Yeah, it's definitely a very popular ride. Super fun. We love it. And you can only ride it if you have joined the virtual queue. So there is no standby line as of the filming of this video. They may change that in the future, but right now the only way to ride it is to get in that virtual queue, which you can do at 7 a.m. Whether you have early entry or not. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you do that. So with Epcot, the thing that's a little bit unique about Epcot is that there are two entrances. So you have the main entrance at the front of the park, mm -hmm. and then you have the international gateway towards the back end of the park at the World Showcase near the France Pavilion. Yeah, so uh, your rope drop or your early entry strategy rather will depend on which entrance you're, en you're coming through. So 
Uh, let's start with the main entrance. That's the most straightforward. Okay, yeah, the most straightforward for early entry using the main entrance would be to go ahead and go to Frozen first because that is a ride where the wait time just adds up throughout the day. Or you could do Test Track because mm -hmm. it's right there towards the front of the park. However, I think Test Track is closed for the time being. Yeah, currently it's being refurbished uh, or they just announced it's going to be refurbished for quite a long time. So it gets a little complicated with Epcot, but ideally Test Track is a bigger ride. There is quite a bit of a wait. Frozen is definitely more though. Yep. Um, so we would prioritize Frozen from the main entrance, or uh, you can always rope drop Soren if you prefer to to rope drop that way. Yeah, if you're not a fan of Frozen, but if if you do like Frozen, it is a fun ride. Um, or uh, if you have Genie Plus and you get Frozen on Genie Plus, I mean, you know, there's all sorts of different ways you could do it. Our definitely go-to strategy would be Frozen, though. Yep, Frozen. Yeah, from test the main track. entrance. Frozen test track and then Soren. Uh, if you have early entry and you're using the main entrance. Yeah. So if you're using the international gateway towards the back end of the park, there that decision is pretty easy, pretty straightforward because Remy's is going to be right there within a five minute walking distance of the international gateway. Yeah, so uh, the international gateway is most used for Skyliner resorts, uh, for you know, resorts that you can walk to Epcot from, but anybody can enter through the International Gateway. Uh, so Remy is right there. So you would definitely jump into that line. Um, and then after Remy's, we would recommend going over to Frozen. Uh, it is a bit of a walk. <laughs> mm -hmm. A little bit of a walk, but like we said, that's just a ride that gets really backed up during the day. So, uh, I mean, we were able to knock out Remy's and Frozen mm -hmm. in that first half hour of early yeah. entry. So, um, yeah, definitely go for that next. And then we would say go to Soren and kind of do some of the rides at the front of the park. So that covers it for early entry. So now what if you don't have early entry at Epcot? Yeah, so if you're just uh, rope dropping Epcot. Uh, we recommend getting there about 30 to 45 minutes before a rope drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, depending on which entrance you come from, if you're coming from the main entrance, we would say to rope drop Test Track, Frozen, or Soren. And then if you're taking the International Gateway, I don't think it's really much different than um, doing the early entry strategy. We would just say if you're rope dropping, from the main entrance. Remy's is quite a long way from the, it's actually the furthest thing from the main entrance that you could possibly do. So we just, you could rope drop anything. And if you want to rope drop Remy's from the main entrance, go for it. But it's not our recommendation because it's just going to take a lot of time to walk there. Plus the early entry crowds will already have been lined up. Uh, so yeah. Right, if you really want to do Remy's, rope drop it from the International Gateway. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're rocking and rolling into Hollywood Studios. Yeah, uh, Hollywood Studios has a ton of rides, uh, especially with the new lands that have opened in the past 10 years with uh, Galaxy's Edge and with Toy Story Land. There's just, there's a lot happening uh, and a lot to get done. And there's also a ton of shows. So your rope drop strategy and your early entry strategy are really important in this park. Yep, very important, uh, so much so that we would recommend Genie Plus at Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, you know, we've talked about Animal Kingdom and Epcot. Those are two parks where you don't necessarily need Genie Plus. Sure, they'll yeah. help you out in your day, but they're not a must-have. For Hollywood Studios, because you have so many headliner rides that where the wait times do add up, we do recommend Genie Plus. Yeah. So um, whether or not you have early entry for Hollywood Studios, we do suggest making sure someone is on the app at 7 a.m. if you have Genie Plus and booking a lightning lane for slinky dog dash um, yeah that that lightning lane uh, definitely goes the fastest uh it, it, the times will fill up and it will be gone um our second uh you know you want to get slinky dog dash for sure some of the other big rides to look out for on genie plus would be uh, mickey and minnie's runaway railway tower of terror and Smuggler's Run Rock and, roll and Toy Star. Story Man. I mean, really all the rides <laughs> at Hollywood Studios are, are popular. Um, so it just depends on what your family really wants to prioritize. So let's say you have early entry at Hollywood Studios. Uh, the best way to approach that would be to make your way to Galaxy's Edge. Well, first things first, if you have early entry, we recommend getting there at least 45 minutes before early entry for yep. Hollywood Studios. At least 45 minutes because 
Again, this is a park that does draw a pretty big crowd mm -hmm. for all those headliner rides. And almost yeah. everyone is going to want to start their day off with either Rise of the Resistance or Slinky Dog Dash. Yeah. So, um, assuming, let's say you have Genie Plus, let's say you have Early Entry, we would say let's go to Galaxy's Edge and do Rise of the Resistance first. And then uh, go ahead and do Smuggler's Run because they're pretty, they're right next to each other, they're in the same land. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing to note with Rise of the Resistance is that it does occasionally go down or it might not be quite ready at the start of the day, at the start yeah. of early entry. So you want to have a backup plan in place. Thankfully, Smuggler's Run is right there. So that could always, you could always go there and then come and check back at Rise of the Resistance when you're done with that. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. Yeah, that's what we did. And it was really helpful to have that backup plan really close. Uh, when we get into Magic Kingdom, we'll talk about some backup plans that maybe won't be as close. Um, but... Uh, with Smuggler's Run, there is a single rider line uh, that you can utilize if you choose not to rope drop it. But we did want to rope drop it because uh, Smuggler's Run, you get to fly the Millennium Falcon. So there's three different roles. Pilot, where you get to drive. Uh, gunner, where you just like shoot things. And then Engineer, where you, I guess, also push buttons. You fix you fix the ship. So you're either driving or you're pushing buttons. And we wanted to, you know, attempt to pilot because it's that's, that's the cool. Um, so if you use the single rider line, you're always only going to be an engineer. They're just going to kind of pop you into whatever group needs one. Um, so if you want to be something other than an engineer, we would recommend waiting in the standby line or getting an engineer plus or rope dropping it. Yep, definitely. So, I mean, and then say you don't have Genie Plus and you are doing early entry, mm -hmm. your other big choice will be Slinky Dog Dash. Mm -hmm. So it will come between Rise of the Resistance and Slinky Dog Dash. Both are the, probably the two most popular rides at the park. Just yeah. depends what you and your family want to do. You always have the option to purchase a lightning, an individual lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance. Yeah, um, and that um, can be helpful if you don't want to wait in, in the standby queue. Um, it can be long, it can be a hot like some of it is outside so uh purchasing an individual lightning lane so it's not included in genie plus but you can purchase just that ride on its own um could be a good option you also get to choose your time a little bit more uh the genie plus has you know limited time options for the other rides so let's now talk about no early entry at hollywood studios yeah, rope drop strategy rope drop strategy for that so everyone's still making their way to Rise of the Resistance to those rides over there. Yeah, at... our early entry folks are in lines. They're yeah. in line for Rise, they're in line for Slinky Dog. So we think the best strategy if you don't have early entry is to go ahead and make your way to either Tower of Terror or uh, Aerosmith's Rock and Roller Coaster. Um, yeah. Those are the two other big headliners on the opposite end of the park. So most people will probably not have made it that far yet. So you can beat them to it. And then as those uh, crowds from Galaxy's Edge, from the Toy Story Land are making their way to those rides, you can start making your way back to, to Rise of the Resistance or to Slinky Dog Dash. Yeah, and of course like, when you're at Disney, you're going to zigzag all over the park. That's just kind of the, the nature of Disney. Uh, at least we do. We try to go for, you know, whatever has the least amount of wait time. But if you start at the Hollywood Studio or Hollywood Tower Hotel, Tower of Terror, or Rock and Roller Coaster, you're going to go ahead and knock out some of those attractions in that area so that you might not have to zigzag as much later in the day, which is right. really helpful too. Yeah, yeah, like if you start at Tower of Terror and then make your way to um, Aerosmith's, what's it called, Rock and Roller Coaster? Mm -hmm. You know, Lightning McQueen's ride is right there. Yeah. Um, run, the Beauty and the Beast show is right there. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Ra Railway is kind of on your way back to those other areas of the park. Yeah. So yeah, you got some options after those rides too. Yeah. I mean, it's a little spooky to start your day with Tower of Terror, uh, <laughs> but it's fun. it's fun. Yeah, it's a good time. All right, time for the grand finale, Magic Kingdom. This is maybe the most, uh, the one with the most options for rope drop and early entry. Right, but first things first, uh, knowing what time you should get to Magic Kingdom, whether yeah. or not you have early entry, we do recommend getting there 45 minutes to an hour before opening time, before rope drop, mm -hmm. because this is, I mean, arguably the most popular park. Uh, it's gonna draw a lot of crowds for sure. And then, um, and what- And as I mentioned in my last video, Get your Joffrey's at the monorail station uh, before you get to the park so you can enjoy your coffee while you're in the line for rope drop or for early entry. There you go. Yeah. Get some get some caffeine. Yeah. Get ready for your day. Yeah. For sure. You do not want to be rope dropping the Starbucks line at all. They're going to go ahead and let you in when you arrive to uh, the hub area. So that's that circular area uh, right in front of the castle. 
And then they're going to separate you uh, between people with early entry and people without early entry who are hoping to rope drop. They're going to kind of split you up. Yeah, so if you don't have early entry, you really can go in as early as you want. Mm -hmm. um, you can still enjoy Main Street. You can still enjoy the Central Hub and just hang out there, take some pictures while mm -hmm. you wait. And then the other thing you want to do before you get to the park um, is to make sure you book your virtual queue for oh, yeah. Tron mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. So yeah, we so as we mentioned with Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. Tron is another uh, ride that currently has no standby queue so you are only able to ride it if you've joined the virtual queue or if you purchase an individual lightning lane to ride that attraction right anyone can book a virtual queue as we've stated before for epcot right, it's free. whether you have early entry or not um and whether you have genie plus or not yeah so you can book that at 7 a.m and 1 p.m 7 a.m and 1 p.m and if they are if they have extended evening hours at magic kingdom you can also book later in the day as well yeah so first things first Virtual queue, get that Tron. Get that Tron. Get that Tron, that's number one. Hey there, Future Editing Alex here. I'm popping in to let you know that this was recorded right before Disney announced the opening date for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is a retheme of the ride Splash Mountain. Starting on June 28th, 2024, guests going to the Magic Kingdom will be able to enter a virtual queue for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. That is the only way to currently ride that ride is to get in the virtual queue. Therefore, we want to edit our recommendation for Magic Kingdom. The first thing we want you to do if you're going to Magic Kingdom is at 7 a.m., you should get in the virtual queue for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. You're able to try to get in the virtual queue at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. So if you get into the Tiana's Bayou Adventure virtual queue at 7 a.m., you can then attempt to get in the Tron virtual queue at 1 p.m. if you want to ride both rides. This is all subject to change as Disney works out the kinks of opening this new attraction, but currently there are two virtual queues for Magic Kingdom, so it does require an extra step of planning. Now back to past us to explain the rest of our rope drop strategy. But number 1.5 is if, <laughs> <laughs> you, if uh, Magic Kingdom, just like Hollywood Studios, does have a couple yeah. head, a few headliners that draw a lot of crowds, so we would recommend Genie Plus for this park. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have Genie Plus, for Magic Kingdom at 7 a.m. we would say book your first lightning lane and I would choose Peter Pan for that yeah, one. I would choose Peter Pan or Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise could be a good one too. It's just for some reason Peter Pan has such a long wait time throughout the day. It's it's a fun ride. I don't know. Um it just it just doesn't hold as many people mm -hmm. and uh it it's just a just doesn't hold as many people. So it just is a slower load process uh I think I don't know. I'm talking like an expert, and I really have no idea. But I think, I think no, that's right. I think, that, I think that's right. <laughs> um, but we were actually unable to ride it the last couple of times we've gone to the parks. This was our first time that we could because of Genie Plus. Yeah, we booked that lightning lane, and we just walked on it in there. And it was fun. We had mm -hmm. a good time. Yeah. Um, so that's what we would do if we did get Genie Plus, and we had um, the ability to make lightning re lane reservations. But, you know, let's just talk about our early entry strategy now. Mm -hmm. So with early entry, you know, we t as we talked about, you can get in 30 minutes before park open. You're able to access uh, Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Yes. Those are the two lands that are open for early entry. Mm -hmm. And those both have quite a few rides that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. So that will kind of dictate your strategy. It depends which land you want to be in and what rides you want to do in those lands. So let's um, just talk about, um, there, there's definitely two paths you can go here, right? Yeah. Let's talk about Tomorrowland first. That's yeah, the okay. first one that you're going to come to. It's the land on your right. Uh, Magic Kingdom is kind of a wheel and it's as you're coming into the park, it's the first land on your right. Right. So if you're doing Tomorrowland first, it definitely makes sense to just go ahead and do Space Mountain first. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be the main attraction at Tomorrowland. Just kidding. Carousel of Progress. No. Space Mountain. People, I mean, <laughs> people might still want to get some sleep in. I don't no, know. I mean, you don't want to rope out Carousel of Progress. You're going to be able to get into that anytime. True. Yeah. Yeah. So no, definitely, definitely Space um, Mountain. Space Mountain. Um, if you are an Astro Orbiter fan... That uh, is not on Genie Plus, so you might want to hop into that line after Space Mountain. 
Or yeah. Buzz Lightyear. Or Buzz Lightyear, I was going to say, is another yeah. good option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically anything else in that Tomorrowland area makes yeah. sense. You can definitely knock out two to three rides during that early entry time. Yeah. Um, and there's also tons of food options over there if you need breakfast. Like what? Mm, I don't know. I've seen breakfast tots over there. I'm a big, <laughs> bre for breakfast I'm a big tots. breakfast tots girl now, thanks to Hollywood Studios. Thanks to Woody's Lunchbox. This is not an ad. No, it's not. But if you are close to Woody's Lunchbox at breakfast, get the breakfast tots. Yeah, the breakfast tots were really good. They were really good. Yeah. But I've heard they have breakfast tots in Tomorrowland as well. Mm. They don't look as pretty yeah. as the ones from Woody's. Let, but let us know where to find the breakfast tots at Tomorrowland. Because... Let us know your top breakfast tots in the world. Okay. And I'm ready to check them out. In the Disney world? Anywhere. In the whole world. You tell us. We're going to okay. plan our next trip on it. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's so Tomorrowland. Tomorrow um, yeah, that's <laughs> Tomorrowland. If you'd like to uh, use your early entry time in Fantasyland, this is probably the more popular option. Yes. Or more crowded option. Both. Both. Because, <laughs> yeah, because Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is such a popular attraction. I mean, it's really fun. It's great. We love it. Uh, so we would, yeah, we could do Seven Dwarfs first. And then make your way, you could do Whitney the Pooh that's mm -hmm. over there. You could do It's a Small World. You could do Peter Pan's if you choose not to, to use Genie Plus. Exactly. The only thing. The, the teacups, only... don't forget. You could you start can. your day with the teacups. Get crazy. Right. Right, right you can. But <laughs> the only thing to note with, uh, with Fantasyland and Seven Dwarfs is that just like Rise of the Resistance at Hollywood might not be ready right at open, mm -hmm. it's kind of a similar situation here with Seven Dwarfs. So, you know, it's unlikely that it's going to be closed when you get there for early entry, but there is a chance. So that's just something you need to be, be aware of and have that backup plan in mind if that does not work out. But um, one benefit to using your early entry time in Fantasyland is you're already close to several other lands. You're able to get to Haunted Mansion very quickly after that. But so, it's not open during early entry. No, it's not. But if you're using mm. your early entry time in Fantasyland, uh, once the park fully opens, you're closer to some of those other lands. Whereas the people that are maybe rope dropping from the front of the park, they're not going to be able to, to get to those further away lands. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, definitely. That's just something to, to keep in mind. But if you're like me and you just want to be like the most efficient that you can and not waste any amount of time or as little time in lines as you can, I would do, you know, what we can do in either Tomorrowland or Fantasyland. And then right before nine o'clock or whenever the park officially opens, make your way to, what's it called? Adventureland. Adventureland and get to Jungle Cruise because that's another ride where it's gonna there's gonna be like a 90 minute to a two hour wait throughout a day. But not um, so fast because if you don't have early entry, you're able to access, like Adventureland is where you're able to line up for rope drop. So you actually have an advantage if you are just rope dropping, no early entry, you're able to probably beat those early entry people to Jungle Cruise or to Pirates. Right. Um, so I just want to mention that. Yeah, no, so that, that segues into your strategy, your rope drop strategy, if you do not have early entry. So, I mean, a lot of the crowd is probably still going to go to Seven Dwarfs to Space Mountain, but as Alex is mentioning, you're actually able to also line up uh, right outside of Adventureland. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that could be your rope drop is Jungle Cruise and then head over to Pirates of the Caribbean and head over to Frontierland before mm -hmm. the yeah. crazy crowds are coming from um, those other two parts of the park. All right, so those are our strategies for each of the Disney parks. If We hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it, made it this far, Make sure you hit that like button and you are ready to hear, you know, basically the one mistake that we made while we were mm -hmm. at these parks and we had early entry. Um, so this actually happened to us twice, believe it or not, in both Magic Kingdom and Rise of the Resistance. We've alluded to it earlier in the video. Um, and that is that both of our rope drop yeah. rides that we were targeting in each of those parks were down when yeah. we got there. That's Rise of the Resistance and that's Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, we let's talk about the Magic Kingdom one because that was definitely our biggest yeah. mistake. Uh, it was our first day, so we just we weren't as prepared to, to pivot, and no. then we learned very quickly how to do that. Um, but Magic Kingdom, you know, we 
we got in line for Seven Dwarfs even though we knew it was down. It was down for two hours that day. Yeah. We, of course, didn't wait in line for two hours, but we did take a little bit too long to pivot our plan, and we wasted a lot of our early entry time. Yeah, so definitely have that backup plan in mind because, I mean, I wouldn't have guessed that that ride was going to be down for at least two hours of that morning. And we saw people there waiting in line yeah. um, where you really could be just doing anything else in the park. Yeah, I so. think uh, probably I would have hopped into line at Peter Pan earlier or I would have gone to Tomorrowland, knocked a couple things out, and then been able to get back to the hub for the castle opening show. Yeah. Um, and then maybe later in the day grabbed a Gaston cinnamon roll and got in line for Seven Dwarfs. Just settle in in line. Um, what we but did yeah. end up doing was go going to Tomorrowland. We knocked out Space Mountain and, and we did Buzz Lightyear's um, ride. We did have to miss the show in yeah. front of the castle for that. Um, but yeah, just keep keep a backup plan in mind. Or, you know, if Seven Dwarfs, you know, if you want to ride it, maybe it's not the most important thing for you to do. You can start out in Tomorrowland first thing. Um, those rides are not at yeah. risk of being down first thing in the morning. Yep. Well, I mean, everything is well, technically at risk for being down early in the morning, but it's, but it's not as likely. Right, it's not known yeah. for it like Seven Dwarfs is. Um, and if you're still trying to get Seven Dwarfs in and you don't have Genie Plus, or I'm sorry, you don't, didn't buy a Lightning Lane and you don't rope drop it, you are able to get in line right at the end of the day, you know, right before the park closes. That's probably the other, like, ideal time to do it. I, I mean, if you want to reduce your wait time, that's when we would recommend. Definitely. Um, yeah, and then for... Hollywood Studios, what would you change? What was, you know, we, Rise was down. We quickly hopped into Smuggler's Run uh, and were able to, to do that ride and still get on Rise within about 40 minutes. It was, it was still or within, less. within that early entry time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were able to check back real quick. But that was something where, you know, we already knew from the Magic Kingdom experience. It's like, okay, Rise is down. Let's just go ahead and pivot to Smuggler's Run. And then yeah. let's hop right back over to Rise of the Resistance. And, yeah, we did that pretty effectively. I think it would have been trickier if, you know, maybe we had gone to, to Tower of Terror. And Tower of Terror was down. And then also, like... You know the ride that was really close to it to, um rock and roller coaster was also down then you're kind of like well i'm just gonna have to you know ad like admit that i need to take some time or get a breakfast or something and then get back because it's impossible to like get all the way over to another right um another rope drop option um from that part of the park so that's something to keep in mind too maybe you decide on plan a that's close to plan b like Definitely. in proximity so that you were able to pivot easier but we don't want to stress you out i mean really the two rides you need to watch out for the most are rise of the resistance and seven dwarfs mine train those are two that are semi-notorious for being down sometimes at the start of early entry so just keep it in mind obviously if you, you can still rope drop them and hopefully you get there yeah. first and you ride it no problem but just be ready just in case that it doesn't work out. Yeah, so uh, we hope that you like some of these strategies. We'd love to hear what your favorite ride to rope drop is because maybe maybe it's something we haven't even mentioned. I would love to hear it. Yeah, definitely, me too. So that's all for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, we also have a video on essential tips for your trip to Disney World, so make sure you check that out. Yeah, and if you're heading to Universal, we also have a video on maximizing your time there. Yep. Yeah. So again, leave us a like, subscribe to our channel for more Disney theme park and travel content, and we'll see you next Wait, time. Wait, don't forget your breakfast tots recommendations. And yeah, remember that. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.